Hey guys, so I'm here today to do the booktube partner tag with Alicia. She asked me a little while ago to do this with her and I'm really excited to do it. It seems like a really fun tag to do. Basically the way it works is you partner up with someone and they make a video asking you questions and you make a video asking them questions. You have to ask like 10 book related questions and 2 non book related questions. Send the video to the other person then they answer the questions and then we edit it all together and each of us will post a video and I'll put a link down to her video where I ask her questions and she answers my questions. I'll also put links to like the original creators of the tag down below. If you're not subscribed to Alicia already, you really should be because she's awesome. So definitely go down to the description and watch her video if you haven't already. And subscribe to her. So without further ado, let's get into answering her questions. Hey buddy, I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions today. It's actually really difficult to come up with questions on the spot, but you know I like being nosy. Sorry about the noise. If you died but God was like, Chris, you know, I'm going to give you a chance to be reincarnated in any of your favorite characters. Who would it be and why? If I had to choose a character to be reincarnated as, I'd probably choose someone that had a pretty interesting life or lived in an interesting place or both. I'd hope if I was reincarnated as this character, I would have their general uh, ability to do the things they do in their books so I wouldn't be like jumping into their life blindly in which case jumping into a character that is doing quite a lot of crazy stuff would hopefully not be too big of a deal because I would be a part of their story and I wouldn't have to be just like myself in the story having no idea what to do. So keeping that in mind I would choose probably someone from some sort of like fantasy book. I think I would probably choose to be maybe like Ellen from the Mistborn trilogy. Uh, I really like his character a lot. I really like everything he does, everything that he is put through, everything that he gets to do and like throughout the entire trilogy he just gets progressively more awesome in more ways than one. He gets to do and be a lot of stuff, and that seems like a lot of fun. Also seems pretty freaking hard sometimes, but also I just I think it would be fun to be him. I don't want to like spoil anything in the Mistborn trilogy by telling you what I'm talking about. But if you know what I'm if you have read the Mistborn trilogy then you do know what I'm talking about. And yeah, he's just a really good character in my opinion, I really like him a lot. Or I would want to be Bobby, the main character from the Pendragon series, because he gets to do a lot of cool stuff too. He gets to go around and visit all these crazy different worlds and territories, and gets to meet tons of different people, and do lots of awesome stuff. I mean, he gets put in danger quite a bit as well, but he generally knows what he's doing and can figure it out. I know you're really passionate about film as well as books, so when you see a really kind of what you find is a bad adaptation of a book into film, does it ruin the image of the book for you? And if not, how do you kind of get around that issue? And when I see a movie that I don't really like that's based on a book, it definitely doesn't really affect my view on the book at all. I mean, the movie is a really separate sort of thing, and generally what I see in my head when I'm reading a book is completely different from what is in the movie. So I'm still able to keep like my vision of the book in my head the way it was before I saw the movie even if I had seen the movie and didn't like it. Does being on booktube ever kind of present any issues in your life? Do you find yourself prioritizing incorrectly or do you find yourself not having time for other things from reading or ultimately like how has booktube affected your reading habits and your hanging out with friends habits and I know how this is, so that's why I'm asking. So yeah, booktube has affected my life quite a bit. I um, I sometimes put making videos for booktube before other things, or editing a video before other things, or I'll just spend a lot of time like planning out a video and filming it and editing it and doing a bunch of stuff with it before I do anything else that I should be doing. Like it's morning time right now. I'm should be getting ready for work. I'm technically already ready for work, but I had to go to work very soon. But I'm sitting here filming this video, but I don't really have a problem with it. I enjoy making these, and I feel like it's become a really a pretty big part of my life right now. Doing these videos is just a lot of fun and gives me a lot of something to do. And sometimes I do spend a little bit too much time 
doing booktube stuff other rather than actually <laughs> reading books. There's a whole bunch of comments that I have to reply to on a bunch of videos right now that I just, I really like commenting back on as many comments as I can. Uh, usually I try to comment on every comment, like comment back on every comment that's left on my videos. But that gets kind of hard to a certain extent, and so I've been trying not to focus way too much on booktube. I've been trying to read more and do other things more than just focus completely on booktube, even though booktube is definitely very important to me. What is your favorite thing to combine with reading? I know this sounds really weird, but I like combining like coffee with reading, coffee shops with reading. You know how much I love coffee. I also like combining like outdoors like this with reading. I don't know. Just combine anything with reading. What is your favorite? I know that's not really... I'm sure you'll come up with something. Well, I don't like coffee, but I like drinking water with reading. I always have lots of water when I'm reading because I get thirsty really easily. I'm like one of those people that like to eat while they're reading. I don't know why, I just like having something to do. I also like combining outside with reading. Reading outside is a lot of fun. It kind of went from being really, really cold all the time to being really, really hot all the time. So there was really not that much time for any in-between, so being outside isn't all that pleasant ever. But I do enjoy being outside and reading when I do get the chance and when it is nice enough to do so. Uh, sometimes I also listen to really relaxing sounds or m not necessarily music, but like something relaxing and like something that can be background noise, I guess. Who in your life or just in general has convinced you or like encouraged you to grow as a reader and a writer. Um, I'm pretty sure I know who you're gonna say, um, but I know I had like a certain sixth grade teacher who really influenced me to write more. And so I'm asking you, who in your life has really, really influenced you? I'm not sure if you answered this in your Q&A, but I'd really like to know. Well, my mom really encouraged me to read when I was very young. She read to me a lot. When I was younger, she read to me almost every single night, if not every single night, for a very long time. Uh, she read me tons of different stuff, and then I started getting into reading, into reading myself, and then I realized that I really liked coming up with stories of my own, and I would write them, and I would share them with my parents. I mean, none of that stuff was any good, but, I mean, that's what really encouraged me, was my mom reading to me, and then me reading, picking up stuff when I got, as I got older. What do you look for in a book cover also? I'd like to see some of your favorite book covers. I'm pretty sure I am pretty sure I know exactly which one's your favorite. Maybe you've mentioned it before and that's why, but if so, just do it again. My favorite book cover recently is, of course, every Brandon Sanderson UK edition cover, but specifically this one, Miss Born the Final Empire, is one of the greatest covers ever. I just love how minimalistic it is and this cover just fits ridiculously well with the actual story itself. Like this little blue stuff, if you haven't read the story, the blue like stuff on the cover is actually meaningful, it, like is a thing in the book that is important. And I just really like how it's incorporated into the cover, how this everything in the background is incorporated, how this figure is here. I just I really love this cover a lot. Before that my favorite cover was uh, Stephen King's Lizzie's story. And I just love how simple this, like, dust jacket is, and, like, how you can see below the dust jacket onto the more intricate inner cover, which I feel like the, the contrast between the two, the, like, stark red minimalistic cover on the front and then the really intricate cover on the inside just creates this really nice combination, and I really like it a lot. So that would probably be my favorite cover full time which is suiting because this is my favorite book of all time so I guess that works out pretty well. Who's your favorite author? Ha <laughs> ha funny question I know. My favorite author is Stephen King and most people who have watched my channel for a while will know that but if you're new to my channel then my favorite author is Stephen King. I have lots of videos talking about Stephen King. Well one video specifically talking about Stephen King books but lots of other videos where I talk about him quite a bit. I'm gonna combine the next two questions because they're pretty similar. She asked the first one early on in her questions and then she asked me the uh, second question later on after asking me what my favorite author is even though everyone knows what my favorite author is. So she just kind of jumped right into it and asked me the second question. So yeah. I'm knocking on wood because the question I'm about to ask probably will never happen but 
don't have to knock on wood again but if if there was another book burning if there was one in america what would you say you would save for humanity if you could just save three books for all of humanity not just for yourself so we're back to the fire situation if there was another book burning and everyone was like boycotting stephen king and you could only save three stephen king books which of those would you save and why okay so as far as stephen king books go the three stephen king books i would say this is really really difficult i if i'm saving these for humanity then i guess the things that i would choose the books that i would choose to save for humanity and not necessarily for myself are the shining and the stand these two ones because they're like really really they're like two of his best books i think they're like two that could withstand the test of time story-wise and the way they're written they're like two of his earlier books so they're just like his most famous books really and i think out of all of his books these two would be like two classics that could be classics that could be his two biggest marks on the world of writing i guess i don't know that's 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 the best reason I can give. And then uh, the third one I would save of his is on writing because I think it has a lot of really amazing things to say about writing and also has a lot about his life in it. So it kind of doubles as a sort of autobiography where we learn a little bit about the writer's life and about his views on writing. And I think that could be really important. As for three books uh, that I would save for humanity, um, besides those, besides Stephen King books, that's really difficult. I would probably save at least one of the Harry Potter books. I'm not sure which one. Maybe the first one. Probably the first one. Because the first one, I mean, if, you, if I saved like my favorites, like the third or the sixth one, I mean, if other people hadn't saved all the other books, then just jumping into the series that late wouldn't really do anything. Even though the first book isn't like the best book in the series, obviously, I would probably save the first one. And then I would probably save, like, The Lord of the Rings or something. Even though I've never actually read The Lord of the Rings, I would probably get, like, one of those copies where all three of the volumes are bound together into one big book, and I would save that. And then I might save... I feel like I should save one of those, like, really great classics. I think I might save Dracula by Bram Stoker. That's one of my favorite classics. And, yeah, that's probably... That's probably what I'd save. So I know my family doesn't really understand my book buying and how often I buy books. I don't think you buy books as often as I do, but how does your family react? I know I know, but I'd still like to hear more on that. My family doesn't really understand my book buying necessarily. I didn't used to buy books as much as I do right now, most because I didn't really, I had school a lot, so I would like, I wouldn't really focus on reading as much as I am now. I don't really have a lot to do besides work. At the moment, work and booktube and reading are really what I do with my life. So I've been buying a lot more books recently. I usually try to, if I can, get to the package before they do so I don't have to deal with them asking questions about it all because they ask questions about everything quite a bit. But generally, I do think they understand that I love reading and that's why I'm getting books. But at the same time, they don't understand why I got so many books at once sometimes, although I'm not going to be buying books much at all anytime soon because I have so many left to read on my shelf. So for a few months at least won't have to worry about that. I don't know if you've ever read autobiographies or biographies but if you have what recommendations would you give for someone who is new to nonfiction literature or biographies specifically because I've been kind of meaning to read that and this is kind of like for my own you know gain but whatever just what would you recommend? I haven't read that many biographies at all really actually. Um, what I, I would say, once again, Stephen King's On Writing is a really good little half auto autobiography on his stuff. I really, it's mostly just because I love Stephen King, so I don't know if that's the only reason why I love it, but I feel like it's really, really interesting to learn about. Then there's that book I just read a few months ago and talked about a bit called Escape from Camp 14, which is about this guy who escaped from a prison camp in North Korea which is really, really good and really moving and really sad and depressing, but also really important to read. The only other biography I can remember reading uh, is like a Disney biography from your bookshelf tour. I know you already own a Disney biography, but yeah, that's, that's really only the biographies I've ever read that I can remember. I'm sure I've read more for school and stuff, but... Chris, look, isn't he so cute? Yes, yes he is. 
So I've gotten to know you a lot better and I know that we're both really, really big introverts. So my question to you, since I know it's affected me a lot in my life, is how has introversion kind of impacted you both negatively and positively? Well, I feel like introversion is... Uh, being an introvert is a really difficult thing to be sometimes. As someone who is also very self-conscious of everything, that they do and say and feel and everything being that way plus being an introvert kind of makes things a little bit more difficult because you always feel like everyone feels like you're a little bit crazy or weird or unusual for the lack of being able to talk ever like I can talk pretty well in these videos because I'm just sitting here talking to a camera and people on booktube have generally made me feel pretty comfortable but in reality, I generally don't talk at all to the vast majority of people because I just, I don't feel like I can most of the time. I don't really feel like I have much to say and keep to myself pretty much entirely. Like, it seems like people who are not introverted have this, like, impulse or this, like, well of, this deep, deep well of conversation and words and things that they can just pull themselves out of, like, everything that they are out of and, you know, give out to everybody, and that's great for them, but I, but my well is sort of dry, I guess. There's, like, nothing really there to pull out, like, when I'm around other people, it seems like I just don't have anything there to give to them equally that they're giving out, and so that kind of seems like there's this sort of disconnect between me and the other person pretty much all the time and it's kind of affected me negatively a lot during like the places where you would expect it to like school and at work whenever I was in school I didn't really have a lot of people to talk to about anything didn't really feel like a sort of connection with anyone and at work it's kind of the same way pretty much every single job that I've had I've never really felt a connection to anyone there except for this one job I had for like two years at a bakery where I eventually started to make friends there and become comfortable with everybody. But then I left and had to start again and it's just ever since then it's just every job I have is kind of the same kind of thing where I'm just I'm very quiet and people sort of get used to being you used to be you being really quiet so I don't really expect you to say much after a while which I guess is not okay. As for positive things I don't really know um I guess Maybe the people that I do eventually feel comfortable talking to a lot with is generally for a very real reason, like I feel like an actual connection with a person which allows me to be able to open up to them. I guess I don't really create as many connections to people, but I guess I also create connections that mean more to me, like each connection that I have feels more real to me than lots of little other connections that I could be making on a daily basis to everybody around me. If that makes sense, I don't know if that's a positive or not. If you could master any element and control it to suit your superhuman abilities, which element would you choose? I would totally choose air to be like an airbender from like Avatar The Last Airbender. I, out of the four elements in that show, air has always been the most interesting to me. Being an airbender would be the most fun in my opinion. Anyway, I mean, we're not talking about that show in this question, but I'm just saying I think air would be the funnest thing to control and probably make you the most powerful because air is pretty important. You're back to meeting with God. So you're meeting with him this time to discuss your future and God is granting you any career that you want, any career, but you have to stick with it. Which career do you choose? Definitely filmmaking. I mean, I am like, I'm, it combines everything that I like, like I like doing photography stuff and filming stuff and writing and putting stuff together, like creating s like sets to then photograph and film and working with people who are acting and stuff. And so overall, it would be a lot of fun to be a filmmaker. It's one of like the hardest things to go out and be, like logistically it would be very difficult to actually go out and be a filmmaker for real, but if I could like just choose to be one and poof I am one that's totally what I would choose to be as a filmmaker because I could write stuff I could do work with cameras and work with actors and big crews of people 
making this really awesome thing that would, would be what would make me the happiest throughout my life if I were able to be a filmmaker. Which season is your favorite and why? My favorite season is definitely fall because I just love the way it looks and I also love the weather a lot. Fall weather is easily my favorite weather. Fall is just like the perfect in between summer and winter. I love the way it looks and I love the way it feels. It's just like the perfect temperature and it looks beautiful and I just love everything about it really. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely go watch Alicia's video where I ask her questions and she answers them. And like I said, definitely subscribe to her because as you'll plainly be able to see with yourself when you watch her video. She is awesome. Thank you again Alicia for asking me to do this. It was a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to seeing your answers to my questions. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.